I'm Angela Wolf, fashion designer and online instructor, and today we're going to talk about draping. In the 1910s, skirts might have been longer, but the big detail was draping. They might drape, I'm going to grab a piece of fabric here that doesn't match at all. Don't worry, I'm not colorblind, but I wanted something contrasting. This is silk charmeuse. The skirts would be longer and flowing, and they might have a drape on the side like this, which is very similar to what I'm gonna show you, or they might have a drape across the front. You could hide pockets in there. Nowadays, you could actually hide your cell phones in there. There's so many great ideas, but this was the big key. So let me show you how to drape a skirt and make it a little more modern. First, I wanna show you this skirt here. This actually is um, four-ply silk, which is very expensive, and I had just enough left over after making a top. I thought, well, I'd love to make a bathing suit cover-up. So I have this pinned to a mannequin. For draping, you have to have a dress form. It doesn't have to be expensive, but you need one that you can stick a pin into. So that's what you need to check. And also, you need to make sure that it's not too wobbly. Otherwise, put something on the base to hold it up. So here is my little skirt here. This side is a raw edge. I couldn't decide if I wanted to drape it. Originally, it was gonna be a wrap around, and I didn't have enough fabric. So you have to make things work. It's lined. So I'm gonna leave that flat. The key to draping is the drape has to attach to something. When the skirt started, it was hanging like that. Well, you can't just put that like that. It has to be attached to something. So I could either take this and run a thread through here a few ways back. I could fold it and have a buttonhole something like that to hold it up. So for this one, I'm just gonna leave it for now because I can't make up my mind, and I'm just gonna pin it. But the key with the mannequin is you pin and you move things around. If you have jeans on, grab a little metal thing for your pins. This makes it so easy. You're not running all over to get your pins. So just start poking around until you get a drape that you like. Once you have it, then you need to figure out how are you gonna get that to stay there. So for this, I love that. Let me just grab a piece of fabric this is one we're gonna be using shortly, but I could cut this and just have a small piece and use that to hold that in place. Don't worry, I'll give you more ideas, but I wanted to start there. So now let's look a little bit closer at these two. This is the same fabric. It has a little bit of stretch. It's a knit. This waistband is not finished, so don't think that it's just really messy. It has the fusible interfacing, and I have all the draping basted in, because we're gonna look at that later. This is a very simple, straight skirt, and all I did was take the fabric and start to drape until I found a look that I liked. And again, this would be a great spot to put a pocket, hide a cell phone, something like that. So let's get over to this skirt. This is the exact same skirt before the draping. Now for draping, you can either drape on grain or on the bias. The grain line I left the salvages on this fabric so you could see. Grain lines either run perpendicular or parallel to the salvage. Bias is 45 degrees different. My shirt is cut on the bias, which is why it drapes so nicely. This was draped on a mannequin. So you can start by thinking, okay, where do I want this draping to go? If you have a hard time remembering where the grain line is, mark it in with chalk. So I'm just gonna start with this little piece. I wanna show you something. Look at the difference. Here's the bias. Look at that drape. Look at this drape compared to the drape on the other dress form. Big difference. Look at how flat this lays against the body. That's the beauty of bias. That is not draped on the bias. It's draped on the straight of grain, which means that you have a lot more fullness here. So let's just start pinning this into place so I can show you how this works. This is a very thick fabric. I chose a more difficult fabric just to get you going because then it's really easy to go down to the lighter fabrics. I'm just gonna start by pinning this, just like I mentioned. You're gonna... Now, on your fabric, by the way, I finished each edge by just rolling over and having a nice rolled hem. For now, I'm just gonna pin it in place until I can decide what I like. This is the technique. You take this and just start and put the pin going down, just like that. Fold over your fabric. Remember, this is gonna have to go into a seam, so don't just squish all of this up here. It's gonna be too thick. So take another piece, fold it over. Now notice this is not the same 
height as the waistband, it doesn't matter. This is called draping. You drape, you cut away the fabric. I'm just gonna start by making a few pleats here. And this would be something very easy to sew into the waistband. A few more, and then we're gonna move around to the front. I have all of these going the same direction. It doesn't mean it has to stay that way, but it's a good place to start. Now let's just come back around to the side and see what this looks like. This is on the straight of grain. And kind of just play with the fabric a little bit, move it around. Maybe you want the drape really low. Maybe you want it to wrap around the front like my other one. This is how I did the other one. And I kind of just kept playing with the fabric until I got it all the way over to the other side. Now that just looks like a little pooch. <laughs> That's not very attractive. So keep playing with the fabric. See how I can pull this up a little bit? That's getting a little better. So I hope you're getting the idea of the drape. I'm just gonna pin this to the other side and then show you some hand stitching techniques that will really help this. Again, I'm matching it up to the waistband. I could also take it into a side seam. It has to go somewhere though. It's not just gonna drape on its own and stay that way. So I'm gonna pin this up here. Again, being careful not to have too much fabric. Once you start draping, you don't have to use the original fabric. I'm, I'm using the original fabric here so you can see this. Quite often, I will just grab a piece of muslin fabric, which is very inexpensive cotton, and just start pinning all over the mannequin until I get the look I like. All right, here we go. But I don't really like this. Remember on the bias how nicely that, that hung? Well, how can I get that same look? I'm just gonna grab some thread here. It, you would use the same color, but I'm not going to just so you can see what I'm doing. And just start at one end and kind of watch how my needle just goes in and out. See how that kind of helps that? It's helping that to drape a little bit nicer, a little bit flatter than what I'm originally having here. Again, going all the way up through this. See that? That's looking a lot better. All right, I'm gonna go a little bit more. Again, you would use a thread that matches. Now, you could just leave it like that, but what I usually like to do is if that looks nice, then I'm gonna kind of take my thread here and hide it inside the fabric, go all the way over here, and find another spot. So you're actually creating a drape that is a little bit hand done because if you use bias fabric, you use a lot more fabric. So if you're running low on a specific fabric or it's really expensive like the orange one, consider something like this. Again, I'm just gonna go in and out. You see this? In and out of the fabric, pulling. Just like that. And I can do that all the way around until I have a nice drape. Let's just say this is our drape. Starting right here, I'm going to take this. You do a lot of hand stitching on here just to get things together. Then you'll sew it by machine. All right, so here we have a drape. That's where I'm starting. It's really helpful if you have a full length mirror in front of you because you can actually drape and see what's going on. Again, I'm taking this and I'm, I just made one fold here one fold of fabric, folded it over, and I'm gonna do another, just a, just a running stitch. It doesn't have to be neat because it's coming out. You're just trying to get a way to hold this to the waistband, to attach the waistband. Here we go, fold it over. Again, I'm attaching it to the top of the waistband. And just a few more here. You obviously would not have the salvage on here. You're gonna cut that off. But let's just say, mm, that's all you want. You don't want anymore. This is the beauty of draping. There are no rules. You kinda can make them up as you go. So I'm gonna say, mm, that's, that's enough. I'm all finished. So just cut it off. You don't need it. The one thing that you do need to keep in mind 
is that there's no raw edges of fabric anywhere. So right now I'm left with this, which I'm gonna cut this off as well because that's going into the waistband. But I have this ugly thing right here. Again, you would finish this edge. And I'm just gonna pull that up because you have to have this finish somewhere. Do you want it to finish in the center back seam? That's fine. I'm gonna finish it up here. I'm gonna do a few more folds. Let's see here. And pull this up, up here. This looks like a hot mess, don't worry. It's very easy. And back. I'm just gonna finish this off right here so you can see quickly how to put the waistband on. Now, if you did that and showed that to me, I would say that is terrible. Well, that's how you start. Then you go back and again, you fold the pieces where you want them to. Maybe you need a little more fabric out up here. That's why you basted this in. I'm just gonna trim off a little bit so you can see how this evens up with the waistband. Okay, see how that's the same length? So you would hand baste this to the skirt and attach the waistband when you were happy with the drape which I wouldn't be quite happy with that yet. I would want to scrunch this up a little bit more, but you're getting the idea. So let's go back to this one over here, which it's not finished, but again, I draped this until I was really happy with the look of the drape. This one is not hand stitched at all. I could hand tack it a little bit. I could hide a pocket in there, whatever. So here's the waistband. It has the fusible interfacing. I've attached it to all of these layers. See how those are all folds of fabric? So you're gonna attach the waistband exactly the same way that you would a regular dress or a regular skirt, no matter what length it is. So I'm gonna hand stitch that in first to make sure it looks good. I've attached the waistband all the way around. Let's look over here. Again, see, that's just a waistband on here. And all the way around to the back. In fact, if you look closely, you can see my basting stitches, which is right here. So after I basted that in, I would trim all this fabric to have the same width of your waistband, just like your pattern calls for. I would stitch this in, close the waistband. This is open in the back, just so you can see everything. But this would have a zipper in the back, whatever length the skirt is. Put this back on, you can still do top stitching. Just finish the skirt as if the straping wasn't even there. Hem it, do everything you want. And then when you're all finished, if you want to add a pocket, you can add a pocket. If you want to hand stitch it, just like we did there, that's fine. You could add beading, you could add anything you want, but this is a very simple way to take a simple skirt, this is just a straight pencil skirt, and add draping. So one more thing back to this mannequin here. Now that I've showed you how to do the hand stitching, you could, Technically, this has to be connected to something unless you're gonna pin it to your own body. So I could take this and do those really small hand stitches, maybe take a little band of fabric and hand stitch that on, and then you could just take a snap and put a snap here and a snap here. Perfect. Notice the drape on this fabric. That is not on the bias, but this is a huge difference. This is a very soft fabric, this is not. But this is a very easy way, basic, basic draping. Find a dress form to pin in, and that's all you need. So this is a great way to take a 1910 skirt, long and drapey, into something modern.